Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Oh, hey there. So, um, it's past midnight right now, <laughs> like by a lot. Um, what am I doing shooting a video for you past midnight? Uh, well, I just got back from California and my body thinks it's somewhere between 9 and 10 p.m. Um, I've been gone for most of the month. It's the end of the month and I've been gone. Uh, I was in Orlando for a couple different events and then I flew right from there to Nashville and I was there to present data from Brightline Eating at Obesity Week, which is the biggest conference uh, on weight loss and obesity in the world. Most of it is, uh, it's about gastric bypass. Um, but you know, there's other stuff there, including our stuff was there. Um, and I met some cool people. Um, I met a, a pediatric endocrinologist from Southern California who's doing really interesting work with teens and heard about bright line eating and was so excited about it because she has nothing really substantive to offer them. And I was excited to meet her because I'm really squeamish about working with teens, but she assured me that she, you know, has some teens in her population who are uh, really intrinsically motivated. Um, and anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole now, but anyway, that was great. And then, uh, I was in Nashville for that and the country music awards were that week in Nashville. So the place was hopping. It was off the hook. So I took my little right sized body down to a strip of places in Nashville. And I was looking for a pool table cause I kind of like to play pool, but, and hold, hold with me. There's a point to all this. Um, yeah, they don't have any pool tables in any of the joints down in Nashville, but they do have really good live music. So I found a band that was playing, just crushing it and uh, weaseled my way up to the front and just danced all night. It was so fun. And then I came home for three days and then my husband and I flew with our three daughters out to California for Thanksgiving for our fifth annual family visit out there. Um, Bright Line Eating makes that possible. I'm so grateful. Uh, the very, very, very first boot camp gave us enough money to get our three kids on a plane out for California for Thanksgiving to visit our family because our kids had never met their aunts and uncles and their cousins and their grandmothers. And <sighs> now we've been doing it uh, four more years since then. This was the fifth. And that trip lasted longer than a week and we visited David's family and then my family. It's just a coincidence that David and I are both from Northern California, even though we met in Buffalo, New York, crazy. And um, so recently I shot a vlog on Atomic Habits, right? And um, if you followed along with that and watched the interview with him, I asked James Clear, I said, how do you handle your habits when you travel? Because I got to say it, it kills me, right? And he gave this brilliant analogy that I guess his friend gave him, which is when you're home, you're growing a garden, your habits are your garden and you're fertilizing and you're, you know, making sure it's the right soil and the right sun and you're watering them. And when you travel, you just try to make sure the plants don't die. Basically, he said, um, even if you're just doing it for a minute, just vote for that identity, just a minute, never miss twice, you know, good to go. And so, um, I was trying, <laughs> um, I meditated for a minute or two or three more days than I can count. I read my book cause I'm really working on the identity of a reader. Uh, I read my book a page or two or three more days than I could count. What else? I moved my body like I did one sun salutation <laughs> more days than I could count, but I was on the road and it's like, it's hard to keep the habits really firm. Um, I did make bright line eating phone calls and I did keep my food really clean. Uh, the rest sort of eroded away. And, um, I noticed in California toward the end, I haven't meditated for any minutes in more days than I can count. And I looked at, I opened my book where I write like the pages that I read, you know, I sort of keep a log. I hadn't read in... I don't know, 10 days or something. And I hadn't even noticed that it had lapsed that long. My body was achy, like, oh, my back starts to hurt if I don't move at all. Oh, planes and trains and cars and ugh. 
So um, I'm home now and I need to resume. You might notice the title of this vlog, Resume. We spell it different around here with a Z, yo, because it's R-E-Z-O-O-M, speed, get back on track fast. I need to resume my meditation, that comes first. I just talked with my Bright Line Eating sponsor, I don't know if you know this, I have a Bright Line Eating sponsor, so exciting. This movement has grown big enough that I can actually plug in, awesome. Um, she said, Susan, I want you to get your meditation back square before you go worrying about exercise. Okay, because exercise is a willpower depleter. She's reminding me, exercise is a willpower depleter. Get your meditation solid because that replenishes willpower, research shows. I was like, yes, ma'am. So I'll be focusing on my meditation for a few days, get that back solid before I go thinking about moving my body. So anyway, I need to resume and um, I need to catch you up on something. If you've been following along, let me let me like give you the trajectory here. I started trying to eat this way, kind of, sort of. I didn't really know that that's what I was doing, but I, I was. In the fall of 2000, uh, in the fall of 1995, the fall of 1995, I was 21 years old. And I marched myself down to a 12-step program for compulsive readers. And I sat in those rooms getting fatter and thinner and fatter and thinner for eight years, trying to figure out how to construct bright lines that would serve me. But nobody was really telling me. There are four bright lines, sugar, flour, meals, and quantities. Nobody told me that. So I wiggled around. And then in May of 2003, when I was obese at the age of 28, I finally fell in with a 12-step group that was like really clean with with a like good guidance about what to do, what to eat. And I lost my excess weight. Um, I relapsed in Sydney, Australia, gained all that weight back and then some, climbed up to a size 24 in three months, lost all the weight again. And since then I've been in a right size body other than a couple pregnancies. So, and that was still right sized, right? It's pregnant. So um, since, 2004, I've been in a right-sized body. Thus proceeded an eight-year stretch of immaculate bright lines, not a baby carrot off my food plan. No bites, no licks, no taste, no nothing for eight years. Then I tried to leave that 12-step program because I it wasn't serving me anymore. Didn't work. I went back. Three more years, perfect bright lines. Then I founded Bright Line Eating. I think the numbers are adding up here. I'm pretty sure that's, anyway, whatever. I'm not going to stop and do the math now, but I think that's how it went. And um, I kept my Bright Lines perfect for the first year of Bright Line Eating. That's kind of amazing to me because in the first year of Bright Line Eating, I was still a full-time college professor. I was teaching four or five college classes every semester. I was the assistant chair of the psychology department. And I was doing 30 hours a week of service in my 12-step community for fun and for free, sponsoring people, going to three 90-minute meetings every week, leading people through the 12 steps. Um, and I was growing the Bright Line Eating movement from nothing to its first 100,000 subscribers, its first 18 employees. And I was writing the book. Like, and I didn't eat off plan once. And then in July, a lazy July afternoon in 2015, I was at a baby shower and I just kept going back to the platter of cheese and salami. I just kept going back and kept going back and kept going back. Didn't keep track, wasn't feeling upset, nothing in particular, <laughs> probably nearly finished the plate of cheese and salami didn't think much about it and got out to the car to leave and realized I just broke my bright lines. And I had a little bit of an out of body experience thinking I'm the leader of the free world of bright line eating. Like <laughs> I'm not supposed to break my bright lines. And what does that mean? Am I about to fall off the rails? Am I about to fall off the rabbit hole? Like I did 
Last time I broke my bright lines in 2000, you know, four. Am I about to gain, you know, from a size four to a size 24 in three months? I didn't know. From then, July of 2015, until not that long ago, a little bit ago, I was on a break, resume, break, resume, break, resume, break, resume, mostly resume, 90% of the time resume, 10% of the time some form of break, journey of exploration. Not really research in terms of the food. Like, I know what I know about the food. Like, the food, it usually doesn't work for me. Once in a rare while it does. I'm not eating to like, I, it's like, I'm over it. Do you know what I mean? I'm over the food. It wasn't that. It was, um, my life has gotten so crazy. I mean, it was crazy that first year. I don't know why I didn't eat that first year, but God bless me, I didn't. But my life has gotten so crazy that um, I couldn't really catch up with my understanding of my habits. Like, what am I doing now? And what's enough? And where's my support coming from? And that 12-step program doesn't serve me anymore. So, you know, but but I'm leading Bright Line Eating, so it doesn't, the math doesn't work. How can I lead it and be served by it and plug into it? And all that just sort of took a long time to sort out. And I stand here now with some news. I know you like news. I like news. And a lot up my sleeve because what's happened in the last couple months is the break resume cycle has stopped for now. I don't know. It's not happening. And I've been synthesizing what I learned and I'm really, really excited about it. And I can't wait to share it with you. I can't wait to share it with you. I haven't birthed this much scientific clarity, this much psychological reality since I gave birth to the boot camp. That's a weird term maybe for you, but that's what it feels like for me. It feels like I go through these contractions and it just, it just happens. It just comes out of me. There was this period of time. And to be honest, it was actually after I started the Bright Line Eating email list and started growing a list of subscribers that I had to figure out, um, how to articulate and piece together the arc of the story of what was happening for those of us who couldn't control our weight and couldn't control ourselves around food. I'd been teaching at the college level about the neuroscience of food addiction and the psychology of eating, but not tailored to weight problems and food addiction per se. I'd been teaching, you know, the study says this and the study says that. It wasn't until I started the Bright Line Eating email list that I had to figure out how to articulate like the science, you know, of the willpower gap and leptin resistance and dopamine downregulation and how they form this story that explains why people can't stop eating and how they're missing automaticity. I never talked about automaticity in my college course. All of that stuff sort of came out when I started to really put my head to, how would I explain to someone who's like I used to be, who can't stop, you know, eating in ways that they know are not in their best interests, the science of what's going on in their brain and the, and the psychology of the new way of life that will serve them better and finally solve the mystery. I'm doing that again, and it's around the break resume cycle. And so I want to share with you just a tiny, tiny, tiny little sneak preview of the framework. It's huge. I can't share all about it here, but then I'll tell you where I'm going to be talking about it and how you can access all the information for free and where it's going to be located. Okay. So basically here's the gist. Here's the, here's the, the main big concept. We're all running around looking for that silver bullet for our weight, right? 
and we start, maybe because it's January 1st, or maybe because we get some kind of health diagnosis or, you know, like bad health diagnosis. Um, maybe it's just a lazy, you know, Saturday or Sunday and we do some Google search and Monday morning we start, right? So we start. And oftentimes hopes are flying high and we expect it's going to be different this time. It's really going to be different this time. So we start and there's this feeling that it's, it's got it. We got to just follow it. We're just going to follow it. It's really not our highest self that's in control of this effort. It's the food controller. The food controller wants to get the ducks in a row finally and never make a misstep. And of course, you know, perfection's not really available on the human journey. Life might get in the way. Somehow we're not getting to the grocery store. Now we have to eat something and, you know, blah, blah whatever, little exceptions, weasel their way in, stuff starts to unravel. We start to relapse, relapse again with the lapse, some lapse. Like I just lapsed with my meditation. I just lapsed with my daily reading behavior. I just lapsed with my yoga, right? So we relapse and that is scary because We've been down that path before. And now there's negative self-talk in the mix. There's a lot of anxiety because we don't want to plummet down to the, we don't want to do the whole weight regain awful thing because that attempt was working. We were losing some weight. It was, we were feeling better. We were feeling great. Maybe we had confidence that we'd finally found the answer. So this relapse is like, it, it, it feels like the death knell of like, a terrible, terrible thing. And it feeds on itself. The what the hell effect kicks in and we crash. And maybe if you're like me, we eat for a while then. (laughs) Because if you're eating, you might as well just enjoy it because you just went through this period of time where you weren't eating all those things. And, you know, now it's like, well, I better get them in, (laughs) right? We're going to eat all that stuff now. And then eventually the weight regain and the ill health and all that stuff, the, you know, the piper comes to get paid. And so we start again and we start and we relapse and we resume and we relapse and we resume and we relapse. And that's the cycle, the resume relapse cycle. So, um, I had this awareness recently that the resume relapse cycle is always in play. I just went and traveled for a whole month Orlando, Nashville, California. I was pretty much traveling the whole month. My food was immaculate. I did not take a bite off my plan. My phone calls were really great too. But my meditation relapsed. My reading relapsed. My yoga relapsed. My movement relapsed. Okay. If I kept going... Eventually, the food would relapse, the phone calls would relapse, right? In life, don't we all have cycles of like, we got it together, oh, things are harder and things are kind of falling apart, oh, we got it together, things are harder, things are kind of falling, oh, we got it together, things are harder. It's like, you know, it's like the email inbox. Sometimes we get it down low, sometimes it, you know, well, there it's long again or whatever, I don't know, I mean... I don't really try to get my email inbox down to zero. My husband does. He's an, he's an email inbox down to zero kind of guy. And, you know, he's agitated if there's 25 emails in there. He's out of his mind, actually. Like, he's agitated if there's more than five. Um, but, you know, even for him, like, I'll see the emails creep up and then it's like he's got it down to zero. It's like that, right? Exercise. We're exercising. It's just those cycles are inevitable. They're human. I wanted to say they're menstrual. They're not necessarily, but like everything cycles, right? Seasons cycle. It's part of being a human being. We don't always have all our ducks in a row. We're not Spock, right? So what's interesting to me is what started to happen to me in the last three and a half years when I stopped fearing the cycle. I'd eaten off plan so many times that the old story that I used to tell myself of, you're going to gain all your weight back, you'll never get back on track. I just didn't believe it anymore. I knew I would get back on track. 
Now, that's not always helpful to know that you can get back on track, because then the saboteur can say, "You can eat off plan. You'll just get back on track." I mean, I have that voice that tells me that. But there is something helpful about not being afraid about it anymore. And what I noticed was, after my ducks were in a row for a while, my food was immaculate. If something happened and I was in a relapse cycle, whether it was with my meditation or with my food, what I noticed was not being afraid about it allowed me a lot more options. Because I didn't crash into the the shame spiral and the isolation spiral, that just makes it worse. I was able to, you know, kind of assess with my highest self, like look around and you know, get the lay of the land and make a couple tweaks, and get back on track. Like start the resume a lot sooner. And what I noticed was, if I anticipated the cycle, the edges of it kind of smoothed out. And then what I could do is I could raise the whole bar of that cycle, right? Just take, take the x-axis and raise it up, so that that sine wave was now happening well above the danger zone of breaking my lines, like it was happening up here. Relapse, resume, relapse, resume. Just a little lapse, little tweak. Back to the resume. Okay, now we're lapse. Okay, a little tweak. Back to the resume. You know what's funny is we have people in our tribe that we call crystal vasers. If you've never done the boot camp, you might not know what that means. I've shot vlogs about this, but you might have missed that too.、Um, at some point in the boot camp, I think it's like module seven or something. I say something like, "If this now feels really, really easy to you, if you're as if you're looking around going, 'This is so easy, it's eerie.'" Like the way it's melting off, I'm not struggling at all. I have zero cravings, zero hunger. Was I just making like too hard a work of an easy thing? Like why is this so easy? It feels weird. Don't mess with it. It's easy because you're doing it. Do not veer off path because you have a crystal vase. It's valuable. Don't juggle with it. That's basically what I say in that video. So, because of that video, these people who've never broken their bright lines since they first started bright line eating, they call themselves crystal vasers. We all call them that. Anyway, when I tell the crystal vasers in my bright lifers community that they do a relapse resume cycle too, they're so relieved. They feel so understood. Like, yeah, I'm not perfect. I mean, I'm I'm perfect with my food. I write down what I'm going to eat, and then I eat only in exactly that. I'm doing that on autopilot, like I brush my teeth. But you know, like sometimes I really need to eat the big apple. I'm not satisfied with the small apple, and sometimes I'm dumping a lot of cinnamon on my oatmeal, like way too much. You'd think it's gross, and like sometimes you know, whatever, right? Like they have the, they have,、um, you know, or they're like, yeah, I never really started to meditate, or you know, I haven't meditated in two months, or whatever it is, right? And so when I describe this cycle, it's like, yeah, me too. Like I get my program strong, and then it feels like I'm kind of, you know. So the question has become, and this is what I'm giving birth to right now.、It、feels really exciting. How? How exactly? Like that's the framework, and I, I'm going to be talking about this a lot. But how exactly do we smooth off the edges? And raise the bar, so that the relapse resume cycle is happening well above the danger and misery zone. And that is what my new course is going to be about. It's going to be called Reboot Resume, and it's going to be offered. Registration is going to open December twenty eighth and close January third. So if you want to. Actually, beyond day one, January first, you might want to register on December twenty eighth. But I'm going to be describing the framework in a set of free videos that I'm going to put out. I like to put out the science and the content for free. I did it in the food freedom video series,、um, and in my webinars, the badly behaving brain, and so forth. I'm doing that again. I'm creating a whole new set of free new content because I want this information out in the world for fun and for free. 
So um, in a couple days, a videographer is flying out to my house from California and we're going to shoot videos one and two. He's going to fly back a few days later. We're going to shoot videos three and four. It's going to be a three video series. Uh, I'll tell you the dates they're going to be released. Grab a pencil. Video one is going to be released on December 18th. Video two is going to be released on December 21st. Video three is going to be released on December 26th, the day after Christmas. And then the video that opens registration that explains the program is going to be released on December 28th and registration will open for the program. So, um, I'm super excited about these videos, the reboot resume video series. And I'm going to explain exactly how you smooth off the edges and raise up that access so that you're far away from the zone of danger and misery and anticipating that cycle. I'm also going to explain some of the neuroscience and I'm going to do that in a webinar that I'm going to give. Oh, I should have looked at my calendar. When am I giving the webinar? I think I'm giving it on December 29th. Saturday, December 29th is the first webinar, I believe. I hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope December 29th is a Saturday. I should have looked at the calendar. I'll be sending out emails about all this. But then I'm also going to be giving another webinar around how to set our goals accordingly. Like, are we shooting ourselves in the foot with the goals that we set? Are we setting ourselves up for the sh sharp spike up and then the crash down in the way we set our goals? I'm going to do a webinar on that on New Year's Eve so you can make sure that your New Year's resolutions are set right so that you're setting your resolutions in a way that empowers you and emboldens you and just makes your life that much better rather than sets you off for a few weeks of doing great only to abandon that goal nowhere to be seen, right? Isn't that how New Year's resolutions usually go? Yeah, not anymore. We're going to share the real science of goal setting with you on December 31st. So um, as I release all this stuff, I'm really hoping this is all going to be free. The, the three videos free, the fourth video free, the webinars free. I want this information out into the world. I'm going to write it into a book. It's going to be my third book, Resume. Oh, wait, you didn't know I'm writing a second book? <laughs> second book is a cookbook. And it's not your mama's cookbook. It's called the official Bright Line Eating Cookbook, Weight Loss Made Simple. And that is going to come out in October of next year. I shot a vlog a while back saying how I wasn't going to release a cookbook, but I'll shoot another vlog explaining why I'm actually going to do that. But the real reason is because a bunch of jerks published Bright Line Eating Cookbooks and we can't get them off Amazon. So I have to publish a real one because they have sugar and flour in their cookbooks and they're hurting people. That's the real reason I'm publishing a cookbook. Anyway, there's other reasons too. I'll talk about that in another vlog. The third book though is going to be called Resume. R-E-Z-O-O-M. And I'm so excited about that book. In the meantime though, right now I'm going to be releasing these videos in this course and I want to inv invite you to where I'm going to be releasing them. I'm going to be releasing them into a Facebook group. Now, don't squawk if you're not on Facebook. That's fine. I'll send you emails. <laughs> if you got an email about this vlog, you're in. If you didn't get an email about this vlog and you're not on my email list, then shame on you. Go to brightlineeating.com and take the quiz or, you know, do something else to get on the email list. Okay. But in this Facebook group, here's why I'm, I'm starting on a public facing Facebook group and I want to invite you into it because the holidays are happening. The holidays, right? Which means you're going to be going to parties and family houses, families, members, houses, and you're going to be going to work. You're going to be going places where you might be present at that moment when someone says, oh, I just ate like eight pieces of pie last night. And I swear that I swear that I swear that I am doing it differently in 2019. And I am going to find a program that is going to set me up for success finally, because I cannot go through one more holiday season like this. I can't even fit in my clothes. I want you there when the person says that. 
And if you are, I want you to have a place to tell them to go right then. So we're forming a public facing Facebook group just temporarily. It's opening right now today, November 28th, 2018. And it's only going to be open until the end of the day on January 3rd, 2019. It's a temporary, but amazing public facing Facebook group. We're going to be in there loving you up. I'm going to be dropping all kinds of free stuff, doing all kinds of Facebook lives, helping you to get through the holidays and then releasing the resume videos on December 18th, December 21st, December 26th, and December 28th, right into that Facebook group so that any one of your friends or family, you can just add them. If you're, they're your friends, just add them. If they're not, you can send them to the link to this vlog. You can just add yourself, just click down below and join that Facebook group. Now, um, an admin from my team or me or somebody needs to approve you. So give us a second, but we're in there a lot all day, every day. Give us a second. We'll approve you. And then you will be able to, um, take a look inside the group. And then as soon as you just say, yeah, I want to be in this group, you just tell Facebook, yep, join and you're in. Okay. You can add your friends and, and they still need to approve that they're in. So you're not being like, rude to them or something like forcing them in somewhere they don't want to be. And of course, anyone can leave the group at any time. But this is going to be the place where the free information on um, how do you finally conceive of your journey in a way that takes the pressure off of being perfect. You can still be perfect um, in terms of your food. That's great and fine. But if you're not, what then? And even if you are, how do you conceive of the cycles in a way that serves you? How do you expect them? How do you lean into them? How do you embrace them? How do you have agency over them? How do you feel in control? Wouldn't that be awesome? I want to teach you this stuff. I want to teach you what's going on in your brain. And I want to teach you the necessary components. I cannot wait to teach you this framework. So join the Facebook group right down below and I will be sharing all about it this month. Happy holidays. I love you so much. I'll see you next week.